everyone, my name is James Harrington and welcome to Turning the Tables, an interview with the boss. Today I'm delighted to be joined by Pat Smith, Small Business Manager from the University of Portsmouth and also my boss. So the idea of today's interview is to put Pat in the spotlight and to ask her questions related to me and my job and to give her the opportunity to answer them honestly. So Pat, I'm asking you to please be kind. <laughs> so let's get to it and let's ask the first question. So to give you a bit of background, I joined the Business Services and Research and Outreach team back in 2016, which is when Pat and I first met and started working together. So Pat, my first question to you is, what was your first impressions of me on my first day at work? You asked me to be kind. So my first impression was that you were very quiet and perhaps unsure of your place within the team. Okay. Yeah, that was my first impression. <laughs> Do you think that's our change? Uh, uh, tremendously, yes. <laughs> Did you um, like recognise any weaknesses? Any like weaknesses that you think I've now overcome? Uh, weaknesses, perhaps weaknesses or lack of experience as well. I think which you know go hand in hand really so I think at that time when I first met you you weren't a a confident person I don't think you had a huge belief in your own ability even though you've got a tremendous skill set I don't think you were aware of the value of those skills Mm. and yes I am enormously proud to have seen how you developed over the years since about five years of us working together that now you are a very confident very competent person who has I think changed quite considerably in those five years do you agree mm, I don't know I don't know where the five years is gone it's just it's just woof, just it's flown by it has but I think that's because We've worked really well together. We've got complementary skills, but it's for me, it's recognizing for those in my team who have got different skill sets to me. And you need that in a team. You can't all have the same skills. It, it wouldn't work. And it's recognizing that. And it's also championing those individuals like yourself to say, actually, I can't do this, but you can. But it was instilling that belief into you that you could do it. Also, when we first met to work together and we were, we went away from the actual office environment and I asked you, what kind of things did you enjoy doing? And I asked you, what kind of things did you find more difficult to deal with? And it was from that that I could work out how to best coach you to develop skills where you felt that you were weaker Make sure that this areas that you're already strong on, that you continue to do so and again raise things. But you had a willingness and a desire to learn. You wanted to grow. You didn't want to stand still. Mm. So it's much easier to work with somebody who has that appetite, to want to get to the next level, to want to do more than it is someone that has decided they don't want to do they, you know, they're, they're happy where they are. You were hungry for more. So that was easy to work with. Yeah, I can imagine for a manager, if when you're, if you had what, like a, a you know, one or two or however many employees where it was this constant battle all the time, I can, how disheartening and demotivating it can be for that manager is that when it's not that two-way kind of two-way thing. So I think we both have a desire for successful outcomes we're both driven by success and we're both driven by a desire to do the very best of our ability as well so we've got similar end outputs that we want together yeah so we might reach that end destination in different ways (laughs) next question to you is 
Was there ever a time when you gave me a project and you thought, oh, oh I don't know whether that was the right decision or, <laughs> or that was something that was in my ability to carry, carry through? So as, as you and I both know, a lot of our work is project based. So we're delivering events or we're delivering things externally or internally at the university. So anything we do, we represent the university and indeed the business school. So it's always a risk reputationally when you give any colleague something to do because of that very thing that we want to give the best for our whoever our customers are. So I had no hesitation in giving you projects to do. And I think one of the first things, as I recall, was starting to build a way to collect evidence for the small business charter that we needed. Because the way that we worked together was that I knew that if there was something you were unsure of, that you would come back to me and ask, and that we had established that connection and trust, that you could ask me, is this right? Should I be doing it this way? From that, you developed more and more with the impact week and you started then to take ownership and responsibility for that. Mm. So that now you're managing our own entrepreneurs and residents program. And that's something that maybe five years ago, I wouldn't have felt that you would have been in the right frame of mind to deliver at that time, even though you probably would have been capable of yeah. building on those different experiences, building on the things that you have delivered and gaining that confidence and understanding how your skills fit and how you can interact with people, which you do brilliantly. You recognise that there was areas that you wanted to develop. And you, that we, it wasn't me saying these are the things you had to do. We discussed these things and you said, these are the areas that I want to improve on. These are the areas I'd like to develop. This is where I don't feel confident on. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we want to give an example, I think even in team meetings, you, you didn't know what to say at a team meeting because you didn't know what the value was mm -hmm. that you were actually bringing to a team meeting. So we talked about that and we built that up to the point that we can't shut you up in a team meeting. <laughs> You know, when when an employee would uh, approach their manager to say, you know, with ideas or, or you know, room for improvement or whatever it is, that you're not being shot down or or it's like, oh, yeah, you know, the managers say, oh, yes, I'll take it on board and we're looking to it later. And then nothing actually happens. Which for an employee, you reach a point where you just say, oh, well, what is the point? I'm not being listened to and my ideas are not being taken into consideration of how things can, can pro things can progress. But you've always, you and Pete, have always listened to what areas I want to develop and... Um... I've also listened to your ideas because I've welcomed your ideas. It's absolutely imperative that I give that openness that you or anyone that works for me can say to me, I've come up with this idea. What do you think? Mm. Because I don't know it all. I've never, couldn't claim to know it all. And I don't see things in the same way as you see things. So I think it's very important that a manager listens to someone's ideas. I think it's important if they're a good idea to act on them. Mm. So the right thing to do is to credit that person that it was their idea and not steal it. And that's happened to me in the past. And when I say how I want to be managed, I always give credit to those who have come up with the work, delivered the work. That to me is really important because that's the motivation for you. Yeah. you know, you've come up with something, you've delivered it. it it's been successful. That's really motivational. Mm -hmm. what, very demotivational is to think, well, I suggested that she didn't listen. If she'd have listened, it could have been so much better. And if there's going to be anything that's creative that I need doing, I can only ever come to you. <laughs> I think everybody comes to me when it comes to being creative, which is a bad thing. 
as I say, it is an extremely helpful skill. Throughout my career, I've never been in a job or an experience such huge support and encouragement from my line manager. You know, you have really encouraged me to push myself outside my comfort zone, for which in the part, you know, in the past, I probably would have shined away. Where did you, where did your style of management come from? Right. Okay. <laughs> my style of management. Um, I've tried to manage you and any other people I've managed as I would have liked to have been managed when I was younger. Yeah. I actually studied at the Portsmouth Business School a long time ago. Um, um, Manpower Studies, it was called. It was Human Resources. So part of my role in the past has been to help managers to know how to manage people. That's was part of it. So I had a good grounding of kind of like the theory. But in practice, my style is to be supportive, but without micromanaging. Yeah. I like to think that I've offered you opportunities that might have been out of your comfort zone, but as already said, you've got the knowledge that you, you can always ask and it wouldn't be a problem if you ask me because I try to be accessible yeah. and to give you guidance, not necessarily to tell you the answers, but to help you think it through so that you're developing those skills as well. So I think that's how my management style is. Yeah, well, well I, I have to say, I probably... From, from working with you, I've picked up how you, how you, how you've managed me and speak to other uh, speak to other members within the team and learn a lot from you. Probably of how if I had a team or when I uh, in a managerial kind of role, how I would want to treat my members and staff and how to encourage them to develop their skills, which is something I've not really thought about or being exposed to in in my in the past with previous jobs it's always been it is it's always been this kind of like barrier manager and us and you know the managers do probably the bare minimum of what's probably required from them but wouldn't actually go <coughs> up and above um you know what it is to be a manager so you know i now know how i would want to treat my team which is something that I've learned from you. Um, thank you. But I think that's something that's important in succession planning, in developing colleagues, that they're equipped to do that so that they, they do know. Very often somebody is promoted into a managerial role that might have been good at the work they were doing, but they've no idea how to manage people, which is a skill in itself. Mm. It comes with experience and it comes with knowing how you didn't like being managed yourself. And I think those things that have stuck with me as well. But I think it's really important to recognise that individuals might want to become a manager or they, they may find themselves, even not if they're managing a direct team, they might be managing a project with, with people in that team. So there's whole different ways of management styles, but it's got to be something that, suits both sides the way that i manage you might not be the same way as i'd manage another colleague who had um, more experience or less experience and when you're kind of on a, an interview panel and um you know interviewing all the various different candidates that are coming in are you always other than you know they're going to have the skills and the experience to fit the job description do you also look at the person to see what, how important is it to you that you can see in them that, oh, that is someone that I could, will be able to get, get along with? Because when you think about it, we spend about like seven or eight hours a day with our colleagues, especially when we're in the office. So I know I would look at a candidate to think, would I get on with you? You know, do, will, do we clash? Do we have the same sense of humour? Is, is that something that is important to you when you interview and can interview people? It's a very interesting question. <laughs> professionally, no, you can't because you could overlook a candidate who would be exceptionally good in the work that you want them to deliver. Mm. 
fact that you may not have anything in common with them and you might not get on with them um, as you might a friend is something that you sometimes just have to deal with in any team and as a manager. You can't expect to get on with everybody or to share the same kind of sense of humour or to say, share the same outlook. But you have to recognise as a manager that you're looking for a skill set to fit into the team or a particular project. So it has to be the right person for the job. Mm. If then subsequently you find that it is also a delight to work with them because you get on with them and it, 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 it's fun, then there's a bonus. Yeah. Isn't then that becomes you know a different perhaps relationship to what um, you and I have enjoyed, um, but there's still all of the things that I've said would still count it, even if it wasn't somebody that I would choose to then go and have a drink with after work. So for me, a manager is not only there to support you on a professional level, but also to provide that support when you are experiencing a rough patch in your personal life. As you know, my mum was diagnosed with cancer back in 2019 and the trauma and the stress that the family and I went through is something that I wouldn't wish upon anybody to, you know, to go through that experience. Um, I felt really fortunate that work was my place that I could escape from, from that life at home and the support you gave me was really, really valuable. Um, when I speak to friends, you know, I don't think many employees would have that same level of support as what you gave me when I was going through that rough period. So now here's my question. <laughs> what advice would you give to a manager uh, who may be watching this video and questioning their managerial support to their members of staff? Okay, well, <laughs> go through periods of real highs where you and I have had great successes which we celebrate together yeah but we also go through lows in our life as well and I think that for me as a manager it's to be understanding of the individual's circumstances and needs and so to be an effective manager I think you have to have that open communication and talk and we spoke and I asked you what you actually needed from me to help you through this and you're a very professional individual you didn't want it to be uh, in hindering in any way the work that you were delivering which which it didn't your your output was as equally as good as in when we're in we're in better times also I knew that if we had a cup of coffee and a quick chat that would just help you. You could just download. You wanted to talk. You could speak to me in confidence. Didn't need to go anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Advise you of the university's policies on things and to reassure you as to where you stood regarding your situation as well. And that worked for you. I wasn't expecting you to be on top form all the time um, because you couldn't be. But I also wanted you to continue to be successful. So it's all about communication, it's about trust, it's about honesty between the manager and, and the employee. And I think that creates a good environment mm. for all of us to work in. Also to understand that we all need time to grieve, we all grieve in different ways. Um, so I think you have to take, also you can't say that one person will react one way and that's right and somebody else will react another way and that's wrong it's understanding you as an individual and that's how I see you as an individual and I'm pretty sure that I recall that you also supported me when I went through the time of my mother's illness and her passing mm -hmm. it goes both ways and I think that that's what managers with their team, with their employees, should recognise it's a two-way relationship. You've always said if things are too much or it's you know really overwhelming, then if you if I just left the office because I needed to go for a walk around the block, 
you knew the reason why they were I didn't have to say Pat I'm just I need to get away from the office I just got up and left yeah I think probably happened on quite a few occasions so we'd have the conversation yeah. with me to make sure that you could have that space yeah I trusted you that you would only take that space when you absolutely needed it mm. and those are the things that you you build up I think over with the years that we worked together a manager needs to listen and I think that is the skill that they have to have you might hear what somebody's saying but are you really taking it in mm. are you really understanding what you're being told because time and being accessible to your employee to your team I think is really vital mm. Mm. Um, how can you understand what it is that I'm asking you to achieve if you don't have the opportunity to come back to me and say can I just clarify this yeah. or, oh you didn't really explain that really clearly Pat could you just say it in another way because I need to make sure I've understood what you mean yeah I or it's to be able to say, no, I, I disagree. I, th I think we could do it this way and this would be a better outcome. So I think it's being able to have that open communication, but to listen and to hear what's being said mm. on it. I think that's really important in any, for any manager. Now I do it and I hope if or anyone that is what is will be watching this video will take that away with them you know whether they're a manager at the moment or that's the direction that they're going in and you know, maybe have a bit of time time out and reflect on their managing you know, the way that they manage their team and take on board everything that you that you said because you're the perfect manager pat <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 maybe not. Some people may argue not. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I've always enjoyed managing people and being able to develop and individuals and to see them grow. And that gives me a great joy. Genuinely, it does. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time, Pat, for talking to me today. It wasn't that bad, was it? <laughs> it was £5.50 an hour, wasn't it? <laughs>